I had a reg regular schooling like everybody else does in India. Then uh, when uh, uh, you are at your crossroads of life and decide which fraternity you want to join, um, uh, chose law primarily because I'm a third generation lawyer in the family. So uh, it was in the veins. Um, uh, practiced for about three years after my uh, doing my uh, LLB and did my masters. I chose uh, criminology as a subject for my masters uh, as um, this facet of uh, uh, criminal mindset, crime, criminal law was very exciting and you're young and you feel you know you really can make a difference. You like the bad boys. Um, then practice for a while. Practice was primarily into the service space. A lot of job related um, government uh, property matters, service law and a little bit of criminology. By that time reality hit me that um, criminology or uh, criminal space is not as exciting. The good, <laughs> the boys are not that good. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, that was on the lighter side. Um, then I chose to end the litigation practice and join army. Um, I'm often asked why after leaving uh, you know, three years into, because that's the most struggling part. Uh, well, um, was always bitten by olive bug. I come from north. Okay. Uh, I'm from a warrior clan and army of course uh, has a lot of uh, regard in my village. My, in my village everybody, every household has a, uh, a person in the army. And uh, so it came naturally when there was an opportunity. Um, I went for it, luckily got through. Um, was commissioned in 2003 uh, with the uh, Judge Advocate Journals branch, which is the legal cadre of Indian Army. Mm, serviced with them for uh, five years, then uh, moved out. Um, uh, we don't, still don't have a permanent commission for women. It was a short service tenure. And uh, then joined uh, telecom major in India, Idea Cellular. Um, Jammu Kashmir was my first posting in the civil space. <laughs> so in army, I never went to CI ops area or field as we call it. But uh, ironically, when I joined uh, uh, the corporate sector, I, I ended up in Jammu Kashmir. Um, amazing learnings there, lot of interactions with LEA. Um, and that is, ex that is where this love with data and information um, uh, happened because um, um, police would uh, reach out or LA LEAs would reach out for a lot of data. Um, uh, and that is how I realized, oh, um, I, I am the liaison officer. I, it has to go through me. <laughs> so a um, lot of regulatory constraints. And um, uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, uh, in telecom, se telecom sector per se is highly regulated in India. Yeah. And Jammu Kashmir is the most regulated of all. So anything which government, TRAI or DOT wants to uh, experiment with in regards to stringent regulations and controls, they are first implemented in Jammu Kashmir. And then percolated, seeing how things work, whether it is beneficial for the uh, uh, national interest per se or not. Um, you name it and each and every agency is in Jammu Kashmir. So exposure was phenomenal. Then moved uh, up the corporate ladder, uh, landed in the um, uh, corporate house um, headquarters in Bombay, um, got a pan India role, which was uh, further exciting. And now I'm part of, uh, I'm a non-techo in a tech space. I, in, I'm in Wipro from past four years, uh, handling their uh, information protection and investigations. And in between for uh, one and a half year, I did the CISO's role as well for the uh, BPO arm of Wipro. So that's been the journey so far, yeah. Well, um, um, I've never really thought about it as a woman, how I feel, but this field is amazing. It's very dynamic. So when I joined, uh, for instance, I joined the IT space, I was in a TSP, a service provider, telecom service provider, and very limited interaction uh, uh, with IT space. 
So when uh, uh, when the shift happened to a core IT uh, service provider, um, I had my doubts. I had my doubts, but my management and leaders showed a lot of faith in me. And that's how they probably pulled me and brought me there. I had my doubts and I would wonder what will I do? I'll get bored. Um, I mean, I'm not a tech how huh? I'm going to sustain, but I, um, we tend to, uh, we're very critical about ourselves, women. Now I'm talking like a woman. We, we are very critical about self. We tend to forget uh, where we come from. But during the course of my um, um, work and how I was executing it, I realized the bases um, were there. My legal training, my experience, my exposure in the services, followed by uh, how telecom, how, how much I got involved with the telecom space, the regulatory regime, all compounded. And all I had to do was just build it up further. Um, unlike what we normally say that you have to start from scratch, you are lost, you know. And um, uh, I never, I never um, faced any kind of a discrimination being um, or felt that because I'm a woman, I'm not hurt or my opinion is not hurt. And because um, I'm told that I bring a very different perspective on the table. And uh, that was the reason, because when um, Wipro chose to hire me and uh, after six months my probation got through, I was given a confirmation. I went back to HR and leaders and I said, uh, may I know why? Uh, so th this was a perspective given to me that um, we, wanted, um, uh, we wanted to experiment because this security space is evolving uh, um, dynamically and it's such a fast pace exponentially. And the complexities are uh, uh, so um, uh, in depth that it's very difficult now to segregate the business, legal, uh, information security aspects. Uh, they're so entwined with each other that we wanted somebody um, with a different mindset, a different skill set in this profile. So, uh, which I think Wipro is, is a pioneer uh, that they experimented with such a, um, a, a thought process. And I ended up being part of the core uh, information security team within Wipro, taking care of a global role. And um, uh, the journey from there has been amazing. It's been four years and um, um, absolutely uh, challenging. So I've never resisted. Uh, changes. Uh, you can say it is a uh, foggy grooming or anything. That cons that um, readiness to face whatever comes next. Uh, that confidence that I'll be able to do it despite the doubts. Mm -hmm. At least I'll be able to give my best. And uh, uh, a takeaway to the girls, uh, especially or anybody else in particular, never resist the change. The dots will connect at the end of the day. Who would have thought um, a lawyer would, um, after doing a tenure in the services, would end up being, I didn't know T of telecom when I joined telecom. I did five years there, did a pretty good job. I landed up in core IT. I didn't, I didn't know I of information <laughs> security, I mean technology. Now I'm pretty savvy. I do investigations. So it, you learn. Nobody stops you from learning until and unless you stop yourself. You have to evolve as a human being, as a professional. So don't resist the change. And never shy away with the challenges life throws at you. You never know. You, you can be next giving an interview. <laughs> you need diverse opinions. So I think I am I'm a trained lawyer. Whether I like it or not, whether anybody else appreciates it or not, I've given invested seven years of my life to this subject. My brain is wired to think like that, like an engineer or anybody else, right? So we, all of us bring different perspectives on the table and at the, the, with one common objective, to find a solution, to find an answer of if something went wrong, why it went wrong, how it went wrong. So every ex, everybody's expertise is required in this space because as I said earlier, the complexities of the threats and its ramifications on people, 
um, nations, um, humanity at large, it's, it's phenomenal. If we, if we start deep diving about it, uh, start deep thinking about it, it's, it's like a whole new uh, ball game. And it's a scary space. So everybody's bit, uh, and people who are interested in security, um, who, who are passionate about it, they should, they should consider taking information security as a career.